So welcome to Cycling Tips, training with power versus heart rate. I use both. Let's have a look over here. We've got a little climb here, used in the stage in Tour Down this year. Quite a popular climb. Got over 1,900 uh, riders on there. Fastest time, Damon Housen. I think he's under 23, silver world time trial champ. Silver medalist, he's got a 726. He's got no power there. The lightning strike indicates someone using a power meter. Second place, Thomas de Ghent, Tour de France rider, Ben Hermans, rides for Radio Shack. And we've got a few other domestic pros here. Francais de Jure rider, you see. And here we have Vegan Boy, Banana Boy, with a, uh, a 758 there with a 372 watts at 63 kilos, around 5.88 watts per kilo. But if you look at my heart rate, it's not very high at all. I've held that heart rate for almost an hour and a half in a half marathon. So training by heart rate isn't very accurate at all. And let's break it down. Let's break it down, shall we? Break it down. So we're going to go to power. We're going to have a look at here. So this is approximately the corkscrew climb. You can see that I've tried to not spike it too much. This is a couple of corners where I've probably pushed a little bit too hard, but that's okay just for a few seconds. You can see there that it's only... We've got 54.18, and then I move over 54.22. So there's only a four-second burst. That's okay. And I've tried to keep it up. What I can notice next time on this climb is I can try and put a more consistent power on the flat sections, really. I was, uh, so you can see there we have a 12-second drop from 4.46 down to 2.73. So I could have been a bit more consistent on that flatter section, just focus a bit more pedaling instead of trying to recover. That's often the mistake you make when you hit the flat section and you try and recover, but you really want to keep the power even. So we can see that variation there. So we average about 370 watts. So there was no spikes, there was nothing too crazy. It was pretty good, pretty good pacing, and which just makes it easy when you've got a power meter on there. Now let's have a look at heart rate. What's heart rate going to tell us? See, I've already started the climb and my heart rate's only 157. And as we go along, it's taken me eight minutes to get my heart rate right up there. Now, by the time my heart rate peaked, I'm already starting to go down the hill. So, 186 is, I can hold that for at least 20 minutes. So we can see that training with heart rate isn't very accurate because it takes a while. In my case, it took me eight minutes to really get into my zone heart rate. Eight minutes. The climb's already over. <laughs> So heart rate is heart rate shows you what how your body is responding to the power you're putting out. Power, on the other hand, shows you what you're actually doing right now. In the last few seconds, it shows you what you're doing right now. So power versus heart rate. Power shows you what you're doing. Heart rate shows you how you're responding to what you are doing. Does that make sense? So it's a bit like cooking. If you want to bake a vegan banana cake then using a thermometer, aka a power meter, is going to help you a lot more than just you know, using a fan or whatever. So heart rate is good, but power is best. Let's just do a cadence quickly. So we can see that on the climb over here, that's where we were. So we're, we're trying to hover between 80 to 100. That's what we're trying to do. So... Nice, uh, last light cadence. And this is a pretty steep climb. I use a compact crank on this one, so I can have that nice cadence. So we probably average around 85 for the climb, cadence-wise. So there you go on cadence. Speed, speed is totally irrelevant. <laughs> speed means nothing really in cycling. It doesn't show you what's happening because you might be drafting, might be tailwind, whatever. So power is the most absolute and accurate way to train. If you're not training with power, then... Uh, you're really missing out a lot. So heart rate shows you how you're responding. Power shows you exactly what you are doing. Exactly what you are doing. So there you go, that's the difference. Heart rate shows you how you're responding to the workload, and power shows you your actual workload. So it's a bit like going to the gym and wearing a heart rate monitor to do bench press. It doesn't really tell you that much, does it? But the numbers, on how much you can bench press, that's what matters. The wattages you can push out as a cyclist, your watts per kilo, that is what matters. Your heart rate doesn't really matter. Your watts per kilo matters. 
if you're in the gym doing bench press, you can put your heart rate strap on. Yeah, that's cool. But what matters, are you getting stronger? Are you lifting more weight? As a cyclist, are you putting out more watts per kilo? Only with a power meter, you can objectively quantify and measure advances in your fitness. Objective advances. Not guessing, not assuming, not you know thinking, oh yeah, my heart rate's... No, no, no. You can say my watts per kilo is up and watts per kilo is the most important factor for a cyclist. Thanks for watching. See you soon.